everyone. Welcome to Day Had Fun. I'm Rachel and I am back with another amazing story about New York City. And I have no other intro other than it's summer in New York City and I am just so fucking happy. It is so great. Everyone is having so much fun. Everyone is out. This is just, you know, if you have listened to this show since we came out last year, which is just wild to think about, you know how I feel about the summers in New York City. I get very ecstatic. I get very excited. Last weekend was just a blast. Everyone is so happy. Everyone is doing things. I know it has been extremely hot. I am aware of that. But if we can just kind of like put that to the side, All the good stuff is happening and it is time to go out and enjoy yourself in New York City. So of course, what is that going to bring us to? Very naturally, it's our Rachel's Rex. We're going to get into the first one, which was your request. Then we'll get into mine. That's the second. So let's get going. Okay. First up was you asked for rooftop pool suggestions. Now, obviously, I would like to recommend the William Vale pool to you. They offer day passes. You can buy cabanas. I think it's like $500 for four people to spend the day there. Then you're going to get a very expensive bottle of wine. And while it will be lovely, that might not be in everyone's budget, including mine currently. So I have an alternative for you that I recently did some reconnaissance and I have to report back. Please do not tell any one of this. I realize I'm putting this on like a platform, but here we go. No tagging. The new Virgin Hotel in Nomad 30th and Broadway has a pool on their fourth floor. And from what I've seen, it is very easy to sneak into. Now I think, okay, listen, I think there's a general understanding here and this is going with an air of confidence. And I'm thinking these hotels They know that New Yorkers probably are going to sneak in and they probably will, you know, look the other way if you are willing to buy a $20 cocktail or, you know, a nice bottle of wine and sit out there and not cause a fuss. But, uh, you know, use this recommendation at your own risk. No one come at me and be like, I got arrested for sneaking into a, like, I, there's no guarantees here. I'm just saying that I did go look. I walked right into the lobby. I went over to the elevator and took it to the fourth floor. You don't need a specialty key to get up there. Am I going to, is this going to be bad? Am I going to regret this? I don't know. Please, no one report me or anything. But anyways, you go up to the fourth floor. There's a full bar there. So like they want, you can go to the bar, any citizen can go to the bar now if you happen to be in a swimsuit and stroll you know one to two feet away from the bar and dip a toe into a pool are they going to get upset I I can't guarantee anything but I can tell you that it looked like it would be easy enough to do but my also other note on that is I must say the time that I went and I looked there was a bunch of young British kids in the pool and I don't mean like 19 year old 20 year olds I mean like 10 year olds. So keep that in mind. But if it is like it has been a hundred degree day in New York City and you're looking for an escape and you want it to be a little bit nice and not just a public pool, I don't know. Try your luck at the Virgin Hotel at 30th and Broadway. <laughs> there we go. Rachel's Rex officially becoming illegal. Okay, on to my second recommendation. And that is from me. If you know anything about me or the show, it is that you will hear me crying and that you know I will not shut up about summer streets. It is my favorite time of year, people. We have returned and it is even bigger and better this year. I went to the one in Queens this weekend. There was like no one there. What are you guys doing? These days are for us. It is for the people. It is free open streets with no cars. You can walk. You can ride your bike. You can bring your kids. You can do whatever you want. So if you missed last week, this Saturday is the one in Manhattan and it is even longer this year. Okay, it's starting all the way at the Brooklyn Bridge, all the way up Park Avenue, and it ends up at 125th Street. This is just, that is how much free space there is for you to roam. And I'm doing like calisthenics arm moves right now. Like you can get out there, you can ride your bike, you can walk in a zigzag, a car is not going to come at you. Now it is 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. It sucks that it's so early. I'm not a morning person, but I did get myself out of the house by 11 last week and I got there at about 11.30. I got an hour and a half in. Obviously my favorite thing to do is I go with my husband and we stop along the route. We stop somewhere and we get iced tea. We stop somewhere, we get a snack. We get up to the top, we get a glass of rosé somewhere, loop back down, maybe stop and get some lunch. It's just whatever you want to do. You guys know how I feel about summer streets. I just love it so much. I will be going to every single one they are offering this year except for the Staten Island. Don't come at me, Staten Island. I'm sorry. It's too hard to get there on my bike. Um, But I will be at this one this Saturday. Make sure you go check it out. Do a long ass bike ride until 1 p.m. in sweltering heat. And then when you loop back down to 30th Street, 
maybe you can go sit in an outdoor pool and have a cocktail. Okay, those are Rachel's Rex. Let's get on to our show for today. This is a very exciting one. It's a little collab here and you will see why. My guest is so cool and she is truly so hilarious. I was so excited when she said yes to this. She is a writer. She is a comedian. Most importantly, she is the host of the perfectly named comedy show. We hope you have fun. You see what we did there. You can check it out August 10th at The Stand right here in New York City. Please welcome to the show, Ruby Carp. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh. Thank you for being on. This is the time where we can let All of the listeners know that you host this incredible show that is the perfect connection with this podcast because your show is called We Hope You Had Fun. Mm -hmm. So you and I are on the same wavelength of connection of making sure everyone's having fun. We just want everyone to have a good time. That's truly, (laughs) it's our MO. It's it's our brand, if you will. (laughs) Very on brand for both of us to be doing this sort of collab right now. I know a, a bit about it, but I would like for everyone to know more because it's kind of wild how long this has been going on. I don't know. Is it fair or in any way like talking down to you to call you precocious? Like, I'm just like so amazed that you've been doing this for so long. The level of guests you've had. I mean, we're talking like Janine Garofalo, Bowen Yang. These are like very important people in the comedy world, yourself included, who's happened to be so fucking hilarious. Some of your videos you've been doing. So why don't you just tell us a bit about all of it? It's truly, it's quite the tale. I'm 22 right now. I'll be 23 in August. Oh my god! I, you know, sorry. <laughs> I like. I'm apologizing for that. But do not. Do not. It, okay. It's it's quite. It's a story. So it all started like when I was like seven. I. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. So there's this theater, it like closed, but I'm sure we all know it called UCB. Yes. That was very prominent in New York City for a, a long time. And my mom just knew a lot of the comedians who like performed there. And my mom raised me by herself. And my mom like works in like corporate. My mom doesn't do anything comedy related. But my mom, when I was growing up, needed somewhere to like put me. So I was at UCB a lot of the time as a kid because I needed a babysitter. (laughs) And also my mom wanted like a social life and was like, I can bring my kid to like a comedy show where everyone's drinking and smoking. It's fine. Yeah. (laughs) So I spent like a lot of my childhood at comedy theaters, just like hanging out. Um, And like sometimes they'd pull me on stage if they like needed a child or something. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Very bizarre. I have like a lot of weird photos of me just like on stage. I was like this big. And then when I was like seven, Amy Poehler, who's one of the founders of UCB, started this like web series called Smart Girls at the Party. And it was like Amy interviewing like children, young girls um, about what they're passionate about. And my mom, my mom's like claim to fame is that she was formerly one of the co-founders of Bust, which is like this feminist magazine. Your family is very oh strange. I, I was just, no, it's not <laughs> strange. It's fucking awesome. Okay, It's sorry. like just me and my mom. We're both just girl bossing cl- too close to the sun all the time. <laughs> and so my mom was very prominent in like being like, you have to be a feminist. You are a feminist teaching me all this stuff. So when I was seven, Amy interviewed me about feminism on her show, Smart Girls. I guess I was competent. <laughs> I, I like said words. <laughs> and he was like, I think you're ready to start doing stand up. Like, I think you're ready to start performing. And I was like, for sure. So I like started doing monologues at the show Ask Cat when I was eight. Ask Cat is like an improv show and they do improv based off of like a monologue, which is essentially like a five minute stand up set where you like tell a story that's funny. For a few years, between eight and 11 years old, I was doing those monologues like maybe once or twice a year. I was just gonna say you were like eight. Yeah. People can't see this. This is an audio meeting, but like my jaw is dropped right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, keep going. I'm sorry. Again, like nothing about this story makes sense. I've also had like four other different weird careers. It's my childhood. It's very New York. Very. Uh, so basically like I was like kind of doing stand up here and there. And then I got asked to write for this website called Hello Giggles when I was like 10 or 11 (laughs) because they wanted like a child writer. They were like, we want a teen column. And I was like, I'll be a teen in two years. Yeah. (laughs) So I started like writing these articles for Hello Giggles and they started a comedy show in LA that was like Hello Giggles present stand up or something like that. And that's where I did my first official stand up set. 
after that, they were like, Ruby, you should be our, like, New York correspondent. You should host our New York show. Because they also knew that I, like, was at UCB and I, like, knew those people. So obviously, I could not produce that show (laughs) because I was 11. But... Uh, my mom because my mom again not a comic but my mom knew a lot of comics was like I can produce it until she's like 18 so my mom was the producer and I was the host at UCB and we would just do at the time it was called Hello Giggles Presents and then like as I got older I stopped writing for Hello Giggles we just like changed the name and made it We Hope You Have Fun and then the pandemic happened UCB closed when everything started coming back I pitched it to the stand and it's been there ever since this is just I feel like I should have issued a trigger warning at the beginning of this. I'm like, if you feel like a piece of shit, then you've done nothing with your life. Yeah, a lot of people hate me, like, and I've accepted that. Oh my God, who could hate you? No, absolutely not. It's just, I mean, to me, you know, I'm always like this with all the guests. I'm just so impressed by everyone. You're bringing it to a level we have never seen before. And I'm sure you get this all the time and you're like, I don't know what you want me to tell you. I'm a savant. That's it. I can't do anything about it. I'm floored. Like, I don't know. Like, I couldn't get my shit together until I was like 37 and you're- Well, this is what it's like. I mean, and we'll talk about this, but this is what it's like growing up in New York. It's like, this was nothing compared to my peers. You're like, you should have seen what they were doing. One of my classmates was in like four Broadway shows before she even got to high school. I really mean this when I say like, no one gave a shit about my show yeah. or like anything I was doing. God, it's so New York because I just feel like it's something we talk about all the time on the show. New York will keep you grounded. So even in this sense of just like what you're saying, you're doing all these phenomenal things. You're being way ahead of all sorts of things in life for your age, everything. And it's still like New York will be like, mm, okay, hold on a second, girl. Yeah. You're not, you're nothing. You ain't shit. I do kind of love that. And I think it's great that you recognize that. And I think that's like a true New Yorker. It's a wild story. I feel like you're like living this like, like, Eloise goes to the plaza, but it's like Ruby goes to the UCB. Yeah, Ruby goes to the comedy club. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have this whole like life you're living as like a child, just like in a very adult place. But I think it's great. I think it's so cool. But I do think you talking about how it's so New York is like the perfect segue into us kind of talking about some of these questions we always have for the show. So the first one is always, when did we move to New York? We know your answer is going to be a little bit different, but I think it's going to play in so well to all of this and how it shaped you. Right. So I was born here and raised yes. here and I've just lived here. My mom <laughs> grew up in Queens. Oh, awesome. So my grandparents came here, put themselves in Queens, and that's where my mom grew up. And then my mom stayed here. Me and my mom have both just been here forever. Yeah. Hanging around. <laughs> and why would you leave when you had such an illustrious career through elementary and middle school? I don't know where else you <laughs> would go. Do you mind talking about what neighborhood you grew up in? Oh, yeah. I grew up on the Upper West Side because I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish. So it was like, like perfect like it it was like obviously we're gonna live here and also (laughs) New York has like an incredible public school system yes so it's just like if you live in a certain neighborhood you can just never go to private school and like have an incredible education so that's what I did we lived in places for schools and then now we don't live there anymore because the Upper West Side is so expensive (laughs) it is crazy but it was a great childhood I loved because the Upper West Side what's so nice about it is it did feel very much like a like neighborhood yes like it didn't feel like I was like in the big city like it it was very much I never thought about it like that I was always just like oh yeah I live here this is where I (laughs) it is a beautiful neighborhood I used to be a nanny up there for probably a family similar to yours and they went to public school and it was so lovely it's a beautiful neighborhood okay so you grew up there you loved it I love to hear things like that there's a lot of times you know, we talk about a lot of kids who grow up in the city, they try to leave and they come back. They they can't stand it. But there's some people who like grow up here and it was like, not for me. But I love hearing like you being like, it was wonderful. Like I got nothing bad to say about it. And so we always get into the next question, which is why did you move to New York? You had a little bit about it with like your grandparents, your mom. But I think it's interesting. You know, sometimes we talk about why did you choose to stay? And I think for you, that's a really interesting question <laughs> because it's like we said, you've had this illustrious career. I'm sure L.A. was calling to you. I'm sure lots of places had your number. Why do you continue to stay here? And that's a great question. So I hated high school. I had oh no. probably like the worst. And I don't even know, looking back, if, like, I had a bad high school experience or if I was just, like, I hate being a teenager. Yes. Or, like, maybe if it was a mix of both. But by the time I was, like, a senior in high school, I was, like, get me the fuck out of the city. Hate this place. It was very much just, like, a... 
I need to get out of my hometown, sure. even though my hometown is the biggest city in the world. So that's why I went to Boston. I went to Emerson. They have a comedy major and all this stuff. So I go to Boston and I would come back like every other weekend for my shows. And I hated it. I hated Boston. Uh, <laughs> I was like, this is the poor man's New York. It's so sad. I-, I didn't realize that like cities existed that weren't anything like New York. Yeah. Like I always assumed it was either like New York or the suburbs. And Boston is this insane intersection of the two. And I was just like, that is not for me. And then my college, your final semester, they have like a program where you can go to LA. So I did that program to try out LA, as you said, because I was like, well, there are a lot of job opportunities here. There's a lot of comedy here. But first of all, I don't know how to drive. So I was like, I don't really know how it's going to work. Every time we talk to somebody who's like, I tried LA, like it's always the driving. I don't want to drive. No bone in my body wants to do that. <laughs> but even beyond that, something I love about the New York comedy scene is that you can do like four shows in a night. You can hop from one venue to the next. There's such a comedy scene here. Mm-hmm. There's a million open mics, a million produced shows, a million clubs. I personally like the scene in New York much better. Yeah. That's not to say, like, if I got a big Hollywood job, like, I would do <laughs> Listen, it's like we're saying, these kids, they grow up here. They love it. But just like the rest of us, you want to get away from home. You want to get away from your mom, maybe. I don't know. I'm sure she's great. But, like, you know, all these things, you want to go and strike out on your own. But unfortunately... For New York City kids, you've grown up in the greatest city in the world. So it's like you get a like harsh reality. I will say the worst part about growing up in New York City and then staying here is that you run into everyone from your childhood at like completely random moments. (laughs) Normally, it's like people who grow up in like a small town in a suburb. Yeah, you like run into people when you go home for like Thanksgiving or whatever. And you're like, okay, I'm anticipating this. I just get jump scares. I could get a jump scare at any moment of the day. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, that's so unfair. I could run into someone I hate and I would have to say hi to them because it's a small city. So I hate that. I hate that a lot. Okay, we got to get one. <laughs> Listen, we're always going on at length of how much we love this town. So every once in a while, we need to also be brought back down to reality of like, there is the shit we all hate. Usually we're always talking about like the trash or something like that. But running into all the high school mates is something a lot of people don't think about that often. And I think even if you leave again, you'll always have a love for this town. Like you were saying, the comedy scene here. I love that you love it here so much. I love that you've done so goddamn much. Okay, so considering all these things, the love you have for New York, the fact that you were born and raised New Yorker, I have to ask you the most important question of the show, and that is, Ruby, what is the most fun you've ever had in New York City? So everyone in high school, before they put an age limit on GovBall, GovBall was like the high school event. Yes. Because you could go as a 14-year-old to GovBall. They like they had no age limit on it. So the GovBall crowd was high schoolers from New York City and like <laughs> New Jersey. Every adult I knew who I'd be like, oh, have you ever been to GovBall? They're like, no, that like prom. Like, no. <laughs> so me and all my friends, it was like a big deal. It was like the thing to go to. You walk over the bridge to get there. It's on like Governor's Island or something like that. And so me and all my friends went and then it started pouring in the middle of the day. Wait, what year is this? Like how old are you? 14? Probably like 15. Okay, okay, okay. So it started pouring in the middle of the day. And me and all my friends are like, should we leave? Because there's no shelter at Gut Ball. It's like trees. And then we were like, you know what? Like I'm tired. Let's just go home. So we leave. We didn't realize this, but there's no re-entry into GovBall once you leave. You can't just, like, leave and come back. Yeah. So we left. And then as soon as we left, it was, like, a flash storm. Like, it just stopped raining. Oh, we were, like, no. there's still, like, seven hours left in this day. We messed up. So me and a few of my friends were, like, we're going to find a way. We have to find a way. <laughs> yes. Love it. So we go to, like, the fences. <laughs> there's... <laughs> there's fences everywhere obviously I'm not like let's hop this fence because that's like there's people watching there's security everywhere it's very like locked down 
But there is this one fence area where everyone who's crew for like one of the stages keeps entering and like bringing in stuff and walking in like with an umbrella and like holding something. Is it kind of a cut out in the fence or like a door or like how are there like like how fences like open? Okay. 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 They open the gates and then you walk in and they close the gates. (laughs) So me and all my friends are watching as these like people like some are dressed in black, some just have like coats on, are all like carrying stuff and umbrellas like walking in. One of my friends had an umbrella. We were like, all right, pop up that umbrella. We're going to walk in behind these people into this VIP area and see what happens. <laughs> Try to fade in. <laughs> the blind confidence of like a 15 year old New Yorker. Yes, yes. Can never be underestimated. The things <laughs> I did in high school, I could have died so many times. You know what I mean? And I never did. And I'm thankful for that. But that's crazy. (laughs) Like, I did crazy things. I would never do this now, ever. In your seven years of wisdom, you've gained. (laughs) Yeah, in the seven years I've grown, Yeah, I've learned a lot. Uh, So we're like, okay, let's do this. So my friend, like, puts up her umbrella and we, like, walk right on in. And absolutely nobody noticed. No. We just walked in and we were fully backstage at like one of the stages. And you're like 15. You probably looked like such a little kid. I also like, I look young as is. Yes. And also I did my makeup terribly. Like I had terrible style. (laughs) I looked like the definition of a 15 year old girl. And I'm sure my friends did too. And no one said a word. Yeah. And the thing is, it's not like we snuck in, like we didn't have tickets. We had tickets. We just had to sneak in because they wouldn't let us re-enter. Yeah, you just had to find a way back in. You weren't doing exactly. anything wrong. So we're backstage and then we weasel our way into the VIP section. And we're like, okay, chilling. Yeah, like awesome. <laughs> but to leave the VIP section, you have to scan your wristband to get Ooh, out. You're trapped. Yeah, and it wasn't like the main stage. It was like one of the side stages. We're going to like miss the headliners if we stay here. So we all took our wristbands and we just were like through the swiper thing. There was like some guy standing there like watching everyone. And we just kind of like threw our hands through like not fast enough. Like, whoa, whoa, whoopsie. Yeah, exactly. Like not slow (laughs) enough for it to detect anything. For some reason, this man, the security man just like didn't give a fuck. He was like, well, how would you have entered here anyway? If you weren't VIP. So I guess you were VIP. (laughs) So I don't know how, but me and my friends at 15 fully tricked the everyone the everyone (laughs) like everyone Um, so you made it back into the regular area you got to see the headliners everything worked out you were partying in the vip yeah yes (laughs) and in vip they like weren't carting so like me and all my friends were like i was was like let's be honest like once we got to the vip were there some drinks being had of course there were yeah you can't you can't turn that down and you're also like 15 you're like i will drink anything yes i will chug straight vodka if that means i'll get drunk (laughs) that's what you're focused on So when I think about that story, I'm like, I've had so many fun nights in the city, but that was so exhilarating. It was just so like, again, like the blind confidence of a New York kid who just thinks they're not going to get killed or in trouble. It's crazy. (laughs) I love it. I mean, I think it's a story we've never had on the show before of being 15. No one has told this story at that age. And it is exactly what we were talking about. I mean, you're saying it perfectly. It's blind confidence. I'm just like, I'm going to go right in here. But what and it honestly plays in whether it was like you were young, you're a New Yorker, whatever you see, it really plays into this idea that we talk about all the time on the show of the theme continues just saying yes. Yes. I see a hole in that fence over there. People oftentimes feel like they don't belong in spaces or something like that. But you know, And obviously there's privilege and things like that. That can become a whole bigger topic. But let's just say like you want to go to some fancy bar that you don't think you belong at. Just go. Just walk in. Just Just walk in. in. Just walk in. Go to the hole in the fence at Gov Ball. Get some free booze when you're 15. I love it. I mean, it's just making me want to be like out and about. And like I can just see you and your friends together like having the best time. You're saying you looked ugly, but I'm sure you looked so cute and like (laughs) had on a summer outfit. And I just love it. And I just think it's such a New York City kid thing to do. And I think it's so fun. Right, exactly. Well, that's the thing is I feel like a normal person would be like, oh, I wouldn't do that. That's crazy. And that takes too much out of you. It's that confidence of just, I can do this. I took the train when I was seven alone. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you just like think that you can do shit. And then it's like, like, I didn't realize so many things about the world until I was like 21 because I, I literally was just like, oh, everything's normal. Like everything's great when you're uh, from New York. And it's like, no, that's not actually 
how anything works <laughs> in the world. Oh God, you're just cracking me up. You're such an interesting person. Like, don't, don't, aren't you just, don't you just love yourself? Don't you just think you're oh, like so you. cool? I know. No, seriously. I've I'm been trying to tell people. <laughs> Listen to me. I just, I'll write a personal letter to everyone you went to high school with. Please. Ruby is very cool. I promise. Okay. I love that story. I love that you love having fun. I love that you love New York so much and New Yorkers and everything. I have to ask you the last and final question of the show. And that is, what is your favorite thing about New York City? I would say I love, and I think these two things go hand in hand. I love how like close everything is, which forces you to be close to all the people. I love how not spread out it is basically. Like I love how you're on top of people all the time because like, even though you're like, oh my God, this is like insane. There are like 50 people in this one train car right now. What makes New York so special is that there are so many people here but we all act as if we were like in a suburb where people are like a little me. Yeah. When I say like New Yorkers are kind, I don't mean like people in the street are like, hey, I've never seen you before. It's not like that kind of kindness. It's the kind of kindness that's just like, we're all human beings. Like we treat each other like humans instead of just I'm driving my car and now I'm parking. Like It's so <laughs> like, it's not isolating being here. And I think the older I get, the more I realize how isolating life in general is mm-hmm. and how like easy it is to like be secluded and just not talk to people or not see anyone. And that's not something you can do in New York. If you want to do anything in New York, you have to see people, even if they're not your friends. And I think that <laughs> for just like human but mental just like existence yeah I think that's so important I think people are meant to be around people it's such a good answer no one has ever said everyone being so close to each other and I think really you know what you're saying is so true of like I don't know I grew up in the suburbs everyone's nice it's a it's a it's a fake sweet saccharin whereas in New York the niceness is so much more like I got your back because I have to, but I don't need to waste time on the pleasantries. No. And I think that makes people so real and cool and better. And I think it's a great answer. And I think it's a wonderful thing to love about New York. It's why so many people who love New York shit on LA and are like, everyone there is fake. They're influencers or like whatever they have problems (laughs) with. It's because like, yeah, there are influencers in New York, but we all are like very real. That's why people make jokes about New York. It's like they're harsh and they're mean and all this stuff. And it's like, no, it's this blind confidence. I'm going to say this to you and you're not going to get offended. Like you need that. You need to hear this. And I just love that. You just sound like such a New Yorker with that. Like you need to hear this. (laughs) And I'm 11 years old. So you're going to listen to (laughs) I just think like it's so unique and there's nowhere else in the world like it. Even cities that are built the way New York is built. It just it's not the same. No, it's not. They can't they can't replicate it. No one can duplicate it. No one is better. I stand by that. I mean, I'm always saying that it's the greatest city in the world. We're on the same page. Everyone needs to listen to us. Ruby, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for that very youthful fun, young, great story. And for everything you're doing for comedy and for making the rest of us feel like absolute garbage for nothing we've done with our life. (laughs) Thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Oh, good. Most of all, thanks, New York. They had fun. Thank you, New York City. (laughs) 